is pasture poultry? Well, basically, it's chickens that are raised on grass, and and, um, and I feed them non-GMO feed. Because um, a lot of times when you're at the grocery store, uh, you're going down the aisle and stuff, and there's great labeling on these packages that really disconnect from their actual chicken experience that they have. Um, so a lot of times cage-free uh, sounds good and all, but a lot of times it ends up being like that, that picture yeah. there. Uh, and they don't get access uh, to um, the outside. Um, now, sometimes the labeling of um, free range uh, just basically means that there's these little patios that they're able to go outside the building and get some fresh air, but they're still not on grass. And chickens by nature are foragers. They'll scratch around looking for different things. Um, so I'm a member of the uh, American Pasture uh, Poultry Producers Association, um, and they define pasture poultry embodies a few key tenets of production. The birds live significant portions of their lives outside on vegetated pasture. The birds are rotated to fresh vegetation, often in a managed way. Flocks are housed in lower stocking densities to ensure the birds can express their natural behaviors without stress and injury to themselves or other birds. In addition to the forage offered via pasture, the birds eat a nutritionally balanced feed that is appropriate with a specific age and type of bird, and slaughtering is done typically done on small scale or exempt facilities by hand um, to respect the life of the animal. Um, so when I go and sell my chicken at the farmer's market, um, I feel like it's my job and duty to uh, sort of, um, the chickens have given up their life, uh, so I want to uh, tell their story at the farmer's market. Um, so. This is one of my movable chicken coops called a chicken tractor uh, that I built. It's uh, eight foot by eight foot. And um, so they're initially in a, a brooder room, which is um, usually the first uh, like three or four weeks. It really just kind of depends on how long it takes for them to get ready to be able to be able to be out on pasture. Um, now this last batch of birds I did, I actually went directly on pasture on day one because it was uh, started the second week of August, so it's warm enough, um, and ended up having uh, great success with that. Now the uh, the first batch, in order to be ready for the farmers market in May, I have to start in middle of February, uh, which gets a little tricky. Um, so those birds typically are in the brooder for about four weeks. The entire Life cycle from baby chick to um, getting processed is eight to nine weeks with um, Cornish Cross um, uh, broilers that I get via the post office. So the hatchery that I get the birds from are located in Lebanon, Missouri from Cackle Hatchery. Now I've, I've done some experimenting with farm store birds versus the ones I get from Cackle Hatchery. They may not be produce the largest birds, but I feel like they're super healthy. Because uh, one issue that you have sometimes with Cornish Cross is that they'll be lethargic, uh, dragging their bellies and other stuff. Um, and uh, let me find it here. One time when I went out to do the chores, um, it's like roosting up there, looking at me, making sure that I'm feeding them okay and all right. But uh, in, in the chicken tractor, there's actually these uh, little roost bars and stuff. Yeah. And um, once they get with the program of, okay, every morning when they're out on pasture, I'm gonna move them to fresh grass. Uh, the, the really smart ones, they hop on it and just sort of go along for the ride and stuff. Um, and so um, I feed them non-GMO feed and I, I get my feed uh, three quarters of a mile off the road at LNS uh, Lumber and Hardware store. and. <laughs> So I'm trying to keep my costs down. They also get uh, processed by a state inspected facility in uh, south of Hagerstown called j and Poultry. Um, so everything's done super close and uh, super local. And I'm exploring next year of uh, possibly doing um, on-farm processing uh, 
with uh, the exemption, there's an exemption where you can process up to a thousand birds on farm. And so I'm exploring that possibility. And what that would allow me to do is sometimes birds may need an extra week or two in order to get to a nicer size. And so by doing smaller batches of like 50 more often, then I'd be able to spread the uh, processing over like three weekends and stuff. Um, also, processing costs can get pretty expensive. So just to put it in perspective, um, the last batch I had uh, 147 birds turned into 203 chicken items, and it was $724. Uh, so if I can uh, recoup some of that from processing myself, then I can make a uh, high premium product more affordable um, and sustainable. Um, so my first year I raised 100 birds, the second year I raised 300 birds, and then this last year I raised 400 birds. Um, my goal next year is probably to raise 600 birds, and part of it is um, I have a limited number of chicken tractors that I can move on pasture. I have a limited number limited enough number of transport crates that I can take them to get processed, and I have a limited number of freezer space. So um, last year I got an upright freezer to sort of expand that amount, and so, so just trying to grow it a little bit um, at a time, and let's see. <coughs> And this, this is what uh, they look like in a, in a brooder situation. So that's where I uh, brought one of the chicken tractors inside the barn, uh, put down some wood chips, and um, they're basically I'm waiting for them to get their feathers out so that they can handle the, um, the, the weather out on pasture. Um, but one of the, uh, so that's, that's, the end, that's the end goal there, uh, filling a freezer full of um, good quality pasture-raised poultry. And one benefit too with uh, knowing your farmer and um, working with a smaller scale farmer is that um, I can adapt from batch to batch and from season to season. So typically my first batch of birds, I focus mainly on whole birds because uh, this last year I, I sold a season pass uh, so what it allowed people to do is buy 10 whole birds or 20 whole birds, um, but not necessarily require them to have all the freezer space. So during the 2019 year, then they could pick up one or two here or there, and uh, that seemed to work out well. I'm still trying to figure out next year what I'm going to do as far as whether or not a season pass or a CSA. Um, so still kind of brainstorming that. Um, but for people's convenience, I do allow people to order online and then pick up at the farmer's market or schedule a um, farmer's market um, or schedule a farm pickup or they can also um, for orders over thirty dollars then I can deliver to before or after work in the Wayne County area um, and this is the, uh, the setup that I had this last year or this last batch and uh, three uh, chicken tractors and I, I was able to uh, save my, my chore time by daisy chaining these. So I was able to feed and water uh, all of the birds in about 15 minutes um, just by daisy chaining the water. So I, while I'm moving this chicken tractor and that chicken tractor, my lawnmower has this 25 gallon tank that's filling up that 15 gallon tank. And then between all of the chicken tractors, I have about 33 gallons of water storage. Then when it's time to move it the next day, the water has all been drank up, and then I, I move them and it's light. So that's kind of the, the setup that I have going on at my farm. Um, and let's see. Um, and you were able to do that 